Hey guys, uh, Ian here, another kind of off the cuff video because life is hectic and I promised I'd upload once a week. So here I am recording a video so I can upload it. I don't really have a script. I do have another PowerPoint. I know you guys really love the PowerPoint talking head format. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. If you didn't notice because I didn't edit it into the beginning, we have a logo, which I'm gonna put here whether or not we uploaded it at the beginning. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Things are coming along on that front. Today we're going to talk about the kitchen studio, the actual tavern space uh, that is the sword and spatula. Fake tavern, not real. Background lore, not super important if you just want to like watch for the cooking part. But there is a little underlying, little underlying lore for those of you who are interested. It's a interdimensional tavern that I access from a portal I built in my closet. Bruh. It's whatever. Anyway, um, basically I couldn't, I can't cook in a normal kitchen. I maybe could, but it's a pain. We'll get into that. The studio that I'm building is built specifically to allow me to record YouTube videos and live stream while cooking or just to chat. If I'm not sitting at my desk, I can go do it from the, from the kitchen studio. So, um, that's just a quick intro. I actually have to go dye my hair. It's awful. And, uh, then we're going to jump in, uh, here in a minute. Uh, transition and okay so i'm back and uh i'm gonna jump right into this again the powerpoints are mostly just so i can keep my thoughts coherent and keep things moving so i'm just gonna go ahead and jump in and keep things moving so this is going to be the uh, presentation for the studio space i'll show you what i'm thinking i'll show you why i'm thinking it um so first off uh I was having some trouble in the kitchen because it was a standard issue kitchen and setting up a uh, production space around that kitchen while still having it be like a usable space for myself and other people was very difficult. So that's why I decided, I said, hey, I've got all this empty space. It kind of works out. Let me go ahead and kind of figure out how this is going to work. So I had to make some, set some, some goals up, as it were, uh, the first one being safety. So the space that I ended up choosing, it is a uh, basement space. Uh, it is unfinished, so there's um, not a whole lot of, there's not any carpet, not a lot of, you know, uh, things in the way. It's just a big open space. Um, so I wanted it to be as safe as possible. There's going to be like appliances down there. I'm mean, moving around. There's going to be a lot of things plugged in, any sort of studio space, especially when dealing with food, especially when it's not necessarily a space that's designed for that. So I just wanted to go ahead and set something up so that I had, you know, safety and, and functionality merged there together. Uh, I wanted to provide an open concept cooking area that allows for video production. So again, one of my biggest problems in a normal kitchen, generally everything's pushed against a wall. It's really hard when you're pushed against a wall to get good shots like we have right now. Um, it's hard to move around. So I wanted to open up a concept, which is again, the space fit perfectly for that. So I decided to do that. Um, make streaming or video production in the space just as easy as cooking in the space. So um, I don't have to do only cooking streams in this spot. There will be a table. I plan on, you know, eating some of the food that I cook, you know, either in live streams or when talking about stuff. Um, but I wanted to make sure that just with a focus on cooking easily, I walk in, I'm ready to cook. Just like that, I walk in and I'm ready to stream, which kind of leads into the next point I wanted to set up, set it and forget it. So another problem with my the way I had the kitchen stream set up is a lot of the equipment that I have here in the main stream setup, the main video production setup, lights and mics and all that stuff, um, I would have to kind of take it apart and take like half of it down and set that up. And then it's, everything's in the way and it's all garbage or whatever. And then do my business there and then pack it all back up, bring it back up here, set it back up. Hope I set it up correctly. Uh, hope the lighting's in the right place, you know. Um, so it's very important to me with the cooking studio as well as the streaming space that everything is set and it's set where it needs to be. I can sit down or I can walk in. I can hit a couple switches. I can, you know, press a button and I'm, I'm making content. So that way I can get to the chunk of it which is hanging out with you guys, which is cooking food, which is playing games. I don't want uh, a lot of lead up. There's enough stuff that we have to do content creating. I don't need to be tearing up and putting down stuff every other day. Uh, I had to make sure the space fits the lore for the channel. I think I mentioned this in the intro, but there is a whole backstory to the sword and the spatula. Um, and I, 
it's really kind of a niche interest of mine for the channel, but I'm hoping a lot of people will be into it. It's sort of a role play aspect. Um, the only reason I'm making, you know, I'm able to go to these games and find these recipes and get these ingredients is because of the tavern. The tavern is the hub where I boop, boop, boop. So I wanted it to have kind of that rustic taverny mystical feel to it, um, which is important. It's not necessarily the key focus, obviously, and that's why it's, you know, the fourth or fifth thing down. But uh, I, something I was really interested in maintaining, you know, the aesthetic for everything. And ironically, after saying all that, uh, the last thing I had in mind, don't go overboard. Um, all of this I'm, you know, paying for out of pocket. I'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, it's important, you know not to oversell it. It's got to be it's got to be workable at the end of the day. If something breaks, it doesn't need to cost an arm or leg to fix it. Uh, obviously, when building a cooking space, you know, those appliances are not going to be cheap. So it's important to work within the confines of a budget. And I'll talk about that in later uh, videos on this, this, this series, this building of this, you know, space, um, and how I was able to do that where I couldn't save on other things, I was able to save on other other things. That makes sense. So this is the base design. So when setting this first draft up, I wanted to do like a base layout. Um, I knew what the space I was working with, but I needed like an idea of how I wanted to fill it. Um, I don't have any like proper measurements yet. That's coming very soon. Um, so then I'll be able to go ahead, you'll see what my idea was and I'll be able to start planning around this. Okay, so <laughs> this was a fever dream I had, and I know it doesn't make a ton of sense looking at it. I got the legend over here, but I'll uh, I'll talk about it some. So the way I have it set up, um, there's a there's a wall. This is this is going to be a wall. Oh, hang on. Yeah, this is going to be a wall right here, um, and this wall is going to be my backdrop. It's got some shelving on it that I'm gonna you know make look nice, and I'm gonna put two lights up here. These yellow pentagons are going to be my lights. Um, so two, you know, lights coming down. One big light to light the space. Um, and then I'm going to have a three camera setup. So that's kind of important to note. So um, there's going to be the front facing camera, which is going to, you know, just kind of like we have it right here, get the whole front of the set from probably the uh, like counter line up. Um, a side view camera, and I'm I'm working on this because I'm not 100% sure, it's going to shoot down at the, the stove for cooking and potentially also down across to the uh, prep area for prep stuff. I don't know, it, it's, we're working on it, but that's the plan. And then this little doodad right here is going to be a, a motorized, Fingers crossed, because we said don't go overboard. A motorized um, mount for a top-down camera. Hello. Purchasing a lot of these little guys here recently. It's going to sit facing straight down, and you're going to be able to get a top-down view of the food. And it's going to have a motorized track so that it can go back and forth. Um, this, this camera in particular was very important to me because... Um, it's going, it would be difficult to get the shot that I wanted while still having that um, freedom of, of that range of motion around the kitchen, around the studio part. Um, so the top down camera is going to catch a lot of that, a lot of the cutting. Um, you know, there are two different camera angles. When food's cooking in the pan, you know, straight down shot of that, be able to see what I'm doing from that end. Um, and then, yeah, so we've got the oven, we've got the refrigerator. And then over here, we have the actual streaming computer. Uh, I have a little pink PC that I'm going to attempt to put a Elgato multi-link cam capture thing in. Uh, it's going to be connected to a large, like a TV or something, so that uh, I can kind of see the production. And then here, we're going to have a smaller monitor set up so that I can see chat for streams. Um, just a way to monitor what I'm doing, um, because this is going to be kind of hard to see in the thick of it. I have to have something up close that will still be out of camera shot. So that's, that's the plan as it stands right now. Uh, I've seen the space. This will work. Um, 
We just sort of got to get measurements and do that sort of thing. Uh, I've got the, some options for the countertop kit. I can either set up like a full-on kitchen countertop or we can build something kind of bare bones. Nobody's really going to see it. So um, these are things that we'll be working on in the coming weeks. Uh, you might be thinking, so, oh, wow, I'm very yellow. You might be thinking when you look at this, uh, this is really expensive. How am I going to be able to emulate this? Like if you're looking into doing cooking content creation, um, you might not have disposable income to say, hey, I saved up a bunch of money and I want to blow it on something that's very niche. Uh, well, I will show you kind of the how I had this set up before uh, in case you were interested in trying to record cooking. I'm going to let you know. It's not great. That's why I'm making this video. That's why I'm making that this studio. Um, but it is doable. Uh, and also, for the record, this is the way I did it. And the way I did it is not 100% idea. Hang on. Hang on. I got to talk to you. So the way I did it originally, um, I have cameras, right? I use a combination of my cell phones. Um, I have a, there's a Sony camera. I have the GoPro, right? Um, and I'm, I'm trained to do this, and I still don't do it correctly. The, the way I was recording these videos, again, not optimal, was bringing an entire computer down, setting up multiple instances of OBS connected to different cameras, recording the cooking from OBS with a Stream Deck button that launched. It's not ideal, but this is the way I did it. This is the way you could do it. You could also do it. You could also just set the cameras up, multiple angles, Hit record on both of them. One, two, three, clap. Record your thing and then go up and edit it. That's probably the way to do it. Probably the way to do it. Um, the way I was doing it, though, allowed me to stream if necessary. Like, I thought if this carried on long enough that I could, like, launch a live stream from the apartment kitchen, which is, you know, ultimately not sustainable. So, anyway, come back to the thing. So, this is how I did it in the before times. Um, you'll notice I'm making these videos now. I'm not, I made the one, I put out the one, the one cabbage roll video and then I ran into difficulties with this and I didn't upload any of the other ones because I was just like, Bleh. so instead I'm doing these, make it make sense. I had the oven and then, oh wait, shoot. I had the oven and then I had the kitchen prep space. I actually set the monitor for the computer on a board over the sink. So imagine trying to cook food and needing like uh, three cups of water and there's a plank with an expensive, well, an expensive monitor. I mean, 150 bucks, you don't want to get it wet. Sitting right by your sink, you have to run out of frame upstairs, get, you know, to the bathroom upstairs, fill up a, a, a cup, a measuring cup. I could have used a, a bowl in hindsight as I'm saying it right now, but, and then running back downstairs and pouring it in the thing, or worse, having somebody around you go do it. It's just not, not actionable, but this is one way to do it, if you wanted to do it. If you live by yourself, um, if you eat fast food for every meal or whatever, you can just turn your kitchen into the studio and never go in there again. Uh, but this wasn't working for me, obviously. And I was, like I said, I was doing it wrong. So that's on me. All right, so con some considerations that I have going forward. Like I said a little bit earlier, mentioned, this is going to be a multiple part series. Um, this one's coming out as my Friday video, but when I get to the next ones, I will be releasing them separate from the Friday uploads just because the next ones will have a fair bit more, uh, more heft to them. I'm, I like how I didn't, didn't change this video. This is some gorilla stuff. This is sit down, make a video and put it out because you have to put out a video and because you need to explain this stuff to people. Take note. It doesn't have to be great. It just has to be done. Anyway, so some considerations for this space. So the counter space, I have to worry about the build. Like I said, I have um, some more expensive options that are going to look nicer and be more functional. Um, I can buy, you know, like a butcher's block and, and actual, like, counters with drawers and stuff for whatever. Uh, or I could just, you know, get a couple of sawhorses, slap that same butcher's block on top of it, throw all the pots and pans and bus tubs down below. You're not going to know because of the, you know, it, it depends on a lot of other factors, but that is the, the counter is the most flexible portion of the build. Um, I really settled on that butcher's block though, because of the aesthetic part, uh, I really want it to have like that rustic wooden look. So that's the only part I'm really sold on for the counter. Uh, as far as the camera setup goes, uh, obviously the camera setup is probably the most important part of the entire space. 
Uh, I need to, for that set it and forget it setup, I need to have power. You know, obviously one of the cameras is going to be up in the air, so I need to make sure that's powered on and somehow broadcasting. I don't know if I'm going to try to do NDI and wireless or just run a really long HDMI, mini HDMI cable. Um, but obviously with it being on the track, the more resistance you have, that's a problem. Um, like I said, with the side camera, I can get good shots of the stove, but how is it going to look further out? Um, that motorized track, looking, I'm, I'm looking, I think the cheapest one that isn't even going to work for me is like $200. So I've, I've seen a few videos, some DIY stuff. Maybe I'll do a whole video on, or even a stream on, um, you know, building the motorized track, sort of like a work with me stream where I just build the motorized track and test it. Um, so that's gonna be the second one. The lighting is sort of built in here too. I mean, I'm not, I can't be super flexible about the lighting. I have to have, it needs to fit the aesthetic while also fitting. I've got some uh, lanterns that I'm, I'm looking at on Etsy some cool lanterns, maybe I can get like a, a bright LED in it and do some stuff and post for the video. The stream will just have, well, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Um, and then, yeah, yeah, that moves into the aesthetic. Um, it needs to be good for the production and also for the set. That it's, I'm, I'm, it's very important to me that this is not, um, this is a place where I go to cook. It's a place where I go to tell stories. Um, so I want, I want it to be an even 50-50 split of production and aesthetic. Um, and then also, I need to make sure that the set doesn't impact production. If I have like some weird pirate's netting hanging from the top and I have to keep walking in and out of that spot, eventually I'm gonna hit it with my head and tear down half the set. So um, I'm working with some people, some idea folks who are gonna help me um, with sort of the design of you know, a rustic mystical tavern, like I said. Um, yeah, that's that's that. I think that's the last, uh, heck yeah, it is. So yeah, that was my video today. Kind of uh, kind of rambly, kind of short. I'm gonna do minor editing, maybe some jump cuts for the ha ha. Um, but yeah, that's mostly it. And then like I said, so next week's video, ooh, next week's video is gonna be super good. I'm going to a Renaissance fair. I'm going to take lots of pictures and videos at the Renaissance fair, so don't miss out on that. Subscribe if you haven't. Oh, call to action, those are important. Subscribe if you haven't. Uh, if you have any questions about the process, leave them in the comments. Um, I'm rambling because I don't know what to talk about because there's so much to talk about. I'll just keep talking if you let me, so. Uh, but thanks for watching. Uh, as always, keep having a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.